Flancy Pasta presents There's Something Wrong with the Local Ice Cream Truck Written by Devil Juice I'm not entirely sure when I started disliking ice cream trucks. I don't think it's an entirely uncommon opinion to have, really. Much like how it is with clowns, it's a relatively innocent concept that's developed some measure of sinister undertones, likely due to a combination of pop culture, paranoia, and a few unfortunately very real events. Frankly though, the idea of ice cream trucks as a whole seems rather ill-advised. A stranger rolls into your neighborhood in an old van. Perhaps nobody in the neighborhood knows anything about who he is or where he came from. He plays music from his van to attract children from out of their homes, some of which may even be unsupervised children, and he offers them sweets. When described in that manner, it makes the whole situation seem rather unsavory. Perhaps, much like with my fear of clowns, I'm simply putting too much thought into it, seeing evil where there is nothing but simple childhood innocence. It wouldn't be the first time, I must admit. However, I don't think I'm wrong in saying that there is something seriously wrong with the ice cream truck that's been frequenting my neighborhood recently. Outwardly, it doesn't look much different than any other ice cream truck that I've seen before. An older, white van with stickers all over the side and the words ice cream plastered across the top of it. You might be able to even find the exact same model on the first page of a Google image search. It even has the tinny voice that interrupts the equally tinny music to say, Hello. It was typical in just about every way. Unless you're the sort of person, like myself, who thinks poorly of ice cream trucks by default, there's nothing about this particular ice cream truck that would immediately strike you as strange or unnerving. That is, if it weren't for the fact that it only ever shows up around 2 to 3 a.m. For various personal reasons that I'd very much like to keep to myself, I found myself living once again with my parents in my old neighborhood. They've always been exceptionally supportive and understanding, so they were more than willing to open their home to me while I got my life back together. I often find myself keeping rather odd hours, since I'm a bit of a night owl, Plus, since I'm currently unemployed, there's nothing much in the way of obligations that keep me from maintaining this habit. As such, it wasn't long after I'd moved in that I first saw this strange ice cream truck. When I first heard that familiar tune over the quiet music I was listening to, I thought I had to be imagining it. Yet, when I pulled my headphones free from my ears, the music of an ice cream truck drawing near was unmistakable. I glanced at a nearby clock, which read 2.53 a.m., pushing down the uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach. I stood up from my desk, putting aside the sketch I had been working on, and turning off my desk lamp. I tried to rationalize the odd situation. Maybe the ice cream truck driver was drunk? Perhaps an elder who drove an ice cream truck in their spare time was beginning to suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's? Several different possible explanations ran through my mind as I made my way over to the window. Yet, I couldn't settle on one in particular. I pushed a gap open in the blinds on my window. My eyes were somewhat used to the darkness from sitting in the dim room, so I could quickly get a clear view of what was going on outside. The ice cream truck wasn't immediately visible, but as the echoing music grew further in volume, I grew even more certain of the fact that it was coming down our particular cul-de-sac. Sure enough, it eventually came into view, rolling down our street in a slow crawl. It played its music as loud as can be, as if it had every right to be there and wasn't likely waking up half the neighborhood. It rounded around the end of the cul-de-sac and came to a slow stop in the middle of the street. The music paused as it did so, but not without letting out one final hello in that metallic voice. It sat there for a little while, idling in the street as if it were waiting for customers. There wasn't a single soul anywhere within sight on the dimly lit street, 
so I had absolutely no idea who it was expecting. I saw the front door of the house across the street from me swing open, the dim glow of a lit hallway light leaking out of it. My first assumption was that it had to be an agitated resident coming outside to complain about the racket. I was caught off guard, though, by who it actually ended up being. A child no more than seven years old. I wasn't exactly familiar with him on a personal level. I recognized him as one of the children I was relatively certain lived on this street. Soon after this, the front doors of several other houses on the street swung open, and out came even more children. They were all very young, the oldest among them only about nine years old, and the youngest looking no more than five. They all steadily filed out of their houses, walking at a slow, uniform gait. They converged on the idling ice cream truck, forming an orderly line in front of it. Seeing all of them neatly lined up and in clear view under the light of the nearby street lamp, I became certain of the fact that this was every single young child that lived on this street. One by one, each of the children approached the strangely dark window on the side of the ice cream truck, which had apparently opened at some point without me noticing. They each reached up towards the window, seemingly without saying a single word or even glancing at the selection depicted on the side of the vehicle. Without fail, though, when each child pulled their hand back from the window, they were each holding some seemingly random, individually packaged treat. Once they had each gotten their single package of ice cream, all without directly looking at or even acknowledging one another, they all turned away from the ice cream truck and made their way back to their houses, walking at that same strange, uniform pace. Once each of them had returned to their homes, their front doors firmly shut behind them, the ice cream truck started moving once more and made its way back down the street its tinny tune echoing out once more from its speakers. Slowly, but surely, its music faded away into silence as the ice cream truck disappeared into the night. My first thought, once I had fully processed what had just happened, was something along the lines of, what kind of Pied Piper bullshit is this? It was strange, too strange even. I wasn't entirely convinced that I hadn't simply imagined the whole thing. Evan knows it wouldn't have been the first time. I even took comfort in the fact that it was likely just a simple delusion. That is, until it happened the next night. And the next night. And then the night after that. I wasn't quite sure where to turn to about this. I thought about telling my parents, but I quickly decided against that. Even with how understanding they've been lately, I doubt they'd really believe me about this. Honestly, I wouldn't blame them. I haven't really been doing a great job of inspiring confidence lately. I also figured that I would be better off not going to the kids' parents or the police about it either. Maybe I'm being a bit pessimistic, but I would probably just end up looking like some sort of lunatic. I've certainly had enough of that to last a lifetime. Besides, it wasn't like I had any evidence of any sort of wrongdoing. The children were not missing or hurt, and frankly, it seemed as happy as can be, as far as I could tell anyway. The story might have ended there. That is, if I hadn't kept sticking my nose where it didn't belong. I wish I'd simply left well enough alone, but I've always been a bit too nosy for my own good. The thing is, I might have seriously fucked myself over here. You see, I figured that if I couldn't talk to the police or the parents about it, I could still ask the children about the strange ice cream truck. It went... not well. I was out in the garage the other day, working on one of my paintings, when one of the local kids stopped by to watch. I didn't know his name or really much of anything else about him either, but he came by pretty often when I was working. We chatted a bit here and there, but nothing ever particularly meaningful. Asking him about the ice cream truck wasn't exactly something I'd put a lot of thought into. It was a pretty spur-of-the-moment kind of thing, you know, just sort of popped out. I didn't really expect much of any sort of response. I more so figured he would simply have no idea what I was talking about. 
I certainly wasn't expecting what did end up happening. All it took was the simple mentioning of the ice cream truck for the kid to react. He completely froze up, any trace of emotion quickly draining from his face. I've never seen a child make an expression that cold and lifeless before. The experience was unsettling, to say the least, not too different from how one feels gazing at a corpse. I tried to ask him about it more, but I didn't get any further response. I then tried to switch the topic back to something else, acting like I had never even mentioned it in the first place, but I couldn't get any sort of reaction out of him anymore. He just stood there, just outside of the garage, silently following me with his eyes as I tried to go about my work. As you might guess, I had a little bit of trouble focusing, given the circumstances. Eventually, I just packed up my stuff and headed inside, closing the garage door as I went. The kid didn't move an inch throughout all of this, even as the garage door closed just an inch or two shy of the tip of his nose. He stood there, blankly staring at the garage door for nearly an hour before heading home. The next night after that was different. The ice cream truck came same as usual, playing its music as loud as can be, but it didn't stop at its usual spot. Its brakes squealed a bit as it slowly came to a stop at the end of my driveway. The music didn't pause this time either. In fact, if anything, it seemed to play its music even louder. Once again, I was astounded by the fact that my parents, or anyone else for that matter, were not woken up by the absolute racket. The children filed out of their houses, marching steadily towards the ice cream truck. There was something different about them as well, though. Something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. That is, not until they drew closer, when they had nearly reached the ice cream truck. They were looking up in my house, seemingly staring directly at the window I was watching them through. There was no way they could see me, peeking out through a sliver of space in between the blinds of a pitch black room. However, I was nonetheless convinced that they knew I was there. They had retrieved their ice cream from the pitch black window, but they didn't head straight home this time. Instead, they lined themselves up once more alongside the ice cream truck at the end of my driveway. They stared up at my window all the while. I don't know how they could stand to be next to the truck, as the music was almost deafening at this point. It almost felt like it was resounding within my own skull. Was I the only one that could hear it? That didn't make any sense. That's when it began. It started with one of those goddamn hellos. The children opened up their ice cream in unison, their eyes never moving from my window. The music came to a stop, replaced instead by the mechanical voice alone, saying, Hello, over and over and over again. The absence of the music brought no relief, as what had come instead was somehow even worse. My head pounded in time with the repetitions of that simple greeting. I tried to look away, to draw back from the window or cover my ears, yet my body was completely frozen in place and unwilling to cooperate. With each repetition, the hello grew lower and lower in pitch to the point where it started to seem almost demonic. The pain in my skull was so blinding that I could barely even see straight. I found my eyes drawn to the children. Their mouths were moving, yet not to eat the unwrapped ice cream that they held before them. They were instead speaking along with the now nearly unrecognizable voice, practically screaming, hello, over and over again. I then felt a blinding pain beyond my left eye as I lost consciousness, collapsing in a heap on the floor. When I woke up the next morning, my head was pounding worse than any hangover I've ever had. Save for the headache, though, I didn't appear to be any the worse for wear. The doubt that had been nagging constantly from the back of my mind quickly started creeping back into the forefront, 
Had the events of the previous night really happened? If there was one thing that I had learned from my hardships over the past few years, it was that you couldn't trust too much in the soundness of your own mind. It all just seemed too strange to be true. I don't know what compelled me to go out to the end of my driveway. Maybe I hoped that I would find some sort of clarity there. What I found instead, though, were several popsicle sticks arranged into a short and simple sentence. Go to sleep. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. I want to give a huge thanks to all of my supporters over at Patreon and YouTube memberships. Your support makes these narrations possible, and I appreciate it a ton. If you'd like to join these lovely ghouls, you can head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash clancypasta, or click the join button below to become a member. And if you'd like creepy cool shirts, make sure to head on over and check out my official merch store for some awesome tees, hoodies, stickers, and more. Alright. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great night. Cheers.